Hey, what's up? Tyson France here with another Motion Revolver tutorial. Or actually, this one's not really as much of a tutorial, more of a tip for uh, people who use After Effects. Um, this actually happens to be my number one pet peeve. Uh, the, the number one thing that has annoyed me the most as a motion graphics designer uh, throughout my career um, is when I'm working with a project file that was started by another designer and the project was passed off to me for whatever reason um, if I needed to take over the animation or if I needed to uh, fix a design or whatever the case may be whenever I was handed a project file uh, from someone else I always cringed because chances are um, the file was not going to be organized in any fashion and um, more often than not that was the case when I would receive a file from um, another designer and I would open it this is essentially what I would find uh, something kind of like this in the project window and when you're opening up a project that you've never worked on before and you see that the project window is structured in this manner um, you know nothing is really named everything just has kinda like comp 1, comp 13 um, and the files are just sort of randomly placed that they're, they're not in uh, folders that are labeled so that you can find things I, I've always asked myself as a designer if I were the person who created this project and I needed to dive back into it say after being away from it for a few weeks or a few months um, how the heck are you supposed to know what comp 14 does uh, I mean you would have to literally dive into each one of these compositions and pre comps and uh, you know just to figure out what comp did what and you'd be wasting so much time reteaching yourself how to use the project and anyone who's used After Effects um, for long enough and has worked in the industry long enough knows that anytime you get a project file from another designer no matter how well organized it is there's always that um, you know couple hours where you have to spend figuring out how the project is built because obviously there are so many different ways to do things within After Effects um, that there really isn't one set way of of accomplishing an animation or a design so wrapping your brain around how that designer uh, built the project can be a daunting task um, and it's made even that much more complicated when you don't even know what the heck any of these compositions do so ever since I became a motion graphics designer I've always kind of prided myself in being uh, ha having good um, organizational practices so I'm actually going to close this project um, and show you how I structure my After Effects project so that uh, if I ever need to come back to the project months or years down the road and uh, you know figure out how I built something or if I ever need to pass off a project to another designer I have all the confidence in the world that that designer is going to be able to understand how I built the project um, in a very quick fashion uh, so that they know how the project is structured and don't have to spend a lot of time learning what I did. So anyway, without spending too much more time on the explanation of it, um, this is how I set up my After Effects projects to keep things organized. And uh, actually, even before I even dive into that, I am going to show you uh, a recent project that I worked on uh, for Yahoo. Um, this is essentially how I structure the folder uh, setup of all of my projects. Um, every single project that I work on has, essentially, has has basically the same folder structure. Um, there's an admin folder which I hold all of my documents, whether they're scripts or you know client notes. Um, usually the admin folder is filled with text documents that I may need to access for um, you know client notes and such. The AEP folder is self-explanatory. Obviously that is where uh, the After Effects projects are held and um, I also number my projects so anytime I'm working on a project for a couple hours I'll save a different version um, you know 
you know, up to as many versions as I need. That way I can always revert back to older versions if I need to, if the client has, you know, changes that he wants to go back um, to a previous animation or a previous design. I have multiple versions of the project saved so that I can go back to those. Um, there's no real set uh, guideline for saving versions. I just kind of, I, I kind of tell myself, you know, once I've altered the project enough to a certain point that I feel that it, it would justify a new version. Like say for example, version one might only contain the imported assets and the original comp compositions and you know maybe the style frames. Version two might begin when I start animating things. Version three might come when I you know complete uh, a few of, of the animations and, and so on. So the project builds uh, throughout time and I have several versions. Uh, the AI folder is where I keep um, vector graphics, normally uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator um, you know, graphics. In this case, I only have one in here, but uh, this is where I would keep Adobe uh, graphics or maybe even logos possibly. Uh, the audio, obviously, music, sound effects, voiceovers, any kind of audio that I'm going to use with the project. Images, uh, you know, photography, any any sort of uh, bitmap image that I would be using with the project, I put in the images folder. Uh, logos folder, um, I usually interchange either the logos or AI folder. Uh, sometimes I'll put the logos folder inside of the AI folder depending on how I want to set up the project, uh, but I have a specific logos folder for this project. PSD uh, folder, obviously for Photoshop documents any layered or um, merged uh, Photoshop documents that I'm going to be working with, I put in the Photoshop folder. Review is for style frames. Uh, if I'm creating style frames for a client, um, I will you know, create uh, an Adobe InDesign project and then save out a PDF, uh, obviously with stills and frame grabs of um, the project. And then uh, if I have any video footage, uh, or pre-rendered animations, stuff like that. That's where I'll keep that stuff in a video folder, uh, as well as an output folder. The output is anything that I am creating, uh, you know, the renders, the preview renders, the final renders, uh, image sequences, anything that I am directly outputting of, uh, for the project will go into the output folder. And I put an underscore uh, in front of that so that the output folder sits on top of everything else. Um, so this is how I structure each one of my projects. As you can see, it's very clean, it's very simple, it's very easy to understand. If I ever needed to zip this folder up and send it to another designer for he or she to work on, um, you know, there's no questioning what is in each folder. Um, very self-explanatory. This structure I carry directly into my After Effects projects. The only difference is Every single one of my After Effects projects that I ever create for myself has two main folders inside the project window. That first folder is called Assets, oops, and the second folder is called Compositions. That's it. And of course, if I create a solid, um, if I create a solid, the uh, we'll actually go uh, get get back to that in a second once I create. Uh, more things for the project, but I just wanted to show you that every single project that I create, uh, when you open up the project, you'll see two folders here, Assets and Compositions. Um, the Assets folder, I'll also create more folders inside here. I'll have an AI folder, I'll have a Logos folder, um, you know, audio folder, video or footage folder, um, you know, any, any like reference files that if I'm referencing Another design, I'll create a ref folder to import things into there. But this is how I structure the uh, a project so that you know when I open it, I know where things are. The assets folder is where all of obviously the assets live. So anything that I'm using that is an uh, external link to the project sits in this assets folder. So for example, I'll click on this AI folder, hit Command I to import. Uh, let's see, desktop. So AI, anything that's in the AI folder, I will import into here. You know, same thing for audio, import the audio. Um, you can even, if you select everything, even if it's in folders, when you import it into After Effects, um, 
See, that, that's actually another way to do it. It'll create the folders for you. So for example, um, you can create, like I did, all the individual folders in here. Or you can just click on that, that uh, assets folder, hit Command I to import, and then select uh, the folders that you intend to import into your uh, project. So if we click open, for some reason it would not allow me to import something here in the images folder so I'm just going to try to import the rest of these but I'm just trying to show you that you can also select folders uh, in the finder when when importing and After Effects will automatically import those folders uh, pre-named so that you don't have to go through the process of naming everything and as you can see when you open up the assets folder everything's right there you know where it is you know if I need to find uh, that audio file that I'm looking for, I know it's going to be in this audio folder. I don't need to scroll through this project window looking for a specifically named file if I don't even know what it's called. If I don't know what it's called, how am I supposed to find it? But if it's an audio file and I know that all, all of my audio assets are in the audio folder, well, that kind of makes things a lot easier now, doesn't it? Then, with, same thing with the compositions folder. I will always have a master composition. So for example, I will usually name whatever my master comp is, I'll usually name with the name master. I will never, ever, ever name an animation or a quick time or a composition final because if you've, if you've done enough After Effects work and worked with enough clients, you know that there is no such thing as a final animation. As soon as you render something out and name it final, you know that your client, uh, three hours later is going to come back to you and say, hey, I need this animation tweaked. And all of a sudden, your final is no longer final. And then you wind up with final number one, uh, uh, final number one, final number two, final number three. And then, of course, you're just confusing yourself because you're like, wait, which final is actually final? So do yourself a, uh, a favor and do not name your animations final because they just will never be final. So with the compositions folder, um, you know, every project is going to be completely different. But if I'm working with many different types of animations and such, I might create a global folder where, you know, maybe I'll place the logo inside of, uh, let's see, this Yahoo logo. Um, maybe I'll place this Yahoo uh, logo inside of a comp and I'll place that in the global folder. So because I'm, um, chances are with this project, I might use this, this logo, you know, a lot throughout the project. Uh, so that's why I place it in a global composition. Um, now let's say for example, with our animation master composition, uh, you know, we might have, let's say, uh, several images and we need to pre-compose those. Uh, into another comp. So we'll select all those layers and hit Command Shift C to precompose. Now you, you're given the opportunity to name this precomp. Please do not leave it called precomp one. Uh, name it whatever you need it to be named. For example, you know uh, maybe this is photo set one. All right. So now we have this this precomp set. Uh, called photo set one and what we might want to do is in this global folder set up an, uh, more uh, you know more folders uh, we'll do like a logo folder we'll have a photo set folder so that if we have more than one photo set um, you know we can subsequently duplicate those and uh, it's all about naming um, your pre comps it's all about naming your comps do not create a new comp and leave it named comp one and then just floating here in the project window um, name your comp animation or uh, name it logo animation if that's what it's going to be um, you know uh, and put it in in the compositions folder uh, that's basically the name of the game that's the point I'm trying to make is uh, you know when you create a properly structured file um, actually for example what I'll do I'll clear this out and I will open up 
uh, the actual Yahoo project file that I was working on. Version 6 was the very last version that I was working on. So I'll open that up and show you exactly how this whole thing was built. And as you can see, I have now I have three, three folders because obviously when you create a solid with an After Effects, it creates this new solids folder. And that kind of annoys me. It's actually something that I, I may write um, Adobe about is that when you create a new solid, it also creates a new folder for you. It doesn't know where the solids folder is and it doesn't place the new solids in that folder unless you leave it where it is. For example, if I create a new comp and then create a new solid inside of that uh, solid, that goes directly into this solid folder. Uh, but if I move this solid folder into the assets folder and then create another new comp, it makes a whole new solids folder. So that's a little bit of an, uh, an annoying thing to me as well. I kind of wish that you could just keep creating um, you know, new solids in the, uh, um, or in the uh, original folder no matter where you place the folder within the project window. Um, another point to quickly make is that when you create solids, um, you know, sometimes it's a good idea to name those solids. Like for example, I have these solids named by the size of what they are and the color. And that's how I name all of my solids. This null is uh, just a control layer that uh, I, I was apparently using to control something. Um, but again, this is the actual Yahoo project that I was working on. As you can see, everything in the assets folder is named. Everything in the compositions has a folder. I have a global folder that contains you know, uh, global assets that I was using throughout the project. There's a scenes folder. Um, because there were several scenes throughout the animation that I was building. Uh, the style frames folder only contains um, you know, the composition in which I was working on to form the style frames. And then I have this uh, Yahoo master comp, which is where everything lives. And uh, you know, I've got all the audio files and um, all the compositions, all the scenes laid out here in the timeline. So. Um, this is how I structure the project. Obviously, uh, there is no set way to, uh, there's no like real rule to how you should structure the file. This is just the way that I've built my, my projects for the past 10 years. So this is what I've gotten used to. Um, you can use your own naming conventions or, or whatever you would like to use. Um, pretty much anytime I do work with designers, uh, there, there have been a few instances where people have actually adopted my uh, uh, method because they just happen to like the way I, I, I set my projects up. But um, that is basically what I wanted to cover with um, the project organization and uh, layout so that you know, you know when uh, if you ever have to hand off an After Effects project to um, another designer, you have the confidence and uh, will avoid any embarrassment if uh, you know you hand that project off and the, and that designer comes back and says I can't figure out anything what's going on in your project. Um, so yeah, the moral of the story: um, organize your projects. Um, leave leave no doubt to anyone who would need to work on your project where things are, how things are set up, and um, Trust me, uh, the world will be a much better place if everyone just starts to organize their projects in some way, shape, or form. Uh, again, thank you for watching this uh, quick tip type of tutorial. Uh, I'm Tyson France with Motion Revolver, and we'll see you next time.